Hello everyone, Anastarita here. Today, we'll be talking about the Kinect Azure and their back femto ball. We'll talk about the ways they are similar, we'll talk about the ways they're different, when to use each tool, and what are the best set of tops and chops to get all the information out of your back tool set. We'll also talk a little bit about your back femto mega and how it's different from the bolt and when would you want to use it in your installations. So let's get started. Before we get too deep into the technical aspects of the differences, I want to add a little bit of context of what is their back in relationship to the Kinect Azure. Uh, you have probably have heard about the Kinect V2 or the Kinect Azure, and most likely you've been using them or been participating on installations where we've done body tracking. So before we get too deep into the technical aspects of the differences, I want to give a little bit of context about how the Orbag Femto technology uh, relates to the Kinect Azure technology. And you probably have heard about the Kinect V2 or the Kinect Azure, and you've used it in your projects before. Um, and even with all the image analysis tools we're developing with AI, Kinect uses indirect time of flight technology, which is a method that measures the distance of an object by analyzing the phase shift of a modulated light that reflects from the object. This technology allows for depth understanding of a scene. Uh, this is very effective in high-speed, high-resolution 3D imaging of objects at short and long distances. And this is one of the reasons why we keep using the Kinect despite the fact that we have all these AI tools. It really gives us a 3D understanding of the space. However, in August of 2023, Kinect announced the end of the sale and the transfer of the Kinect Azure SDK to a partner system. Uh, there's multiple partner systems like Seek and analog devices that are being used, are using the Kinect technology for industrial use. And the commercial partner that uh, Microsoft mentioned was Orbeck to develop the Femtoball and the Femtomega using the Azure Kinect technology. So basically, the Orbeck Femtoball and the Orbeck Femtomega are technologies that wrap the Kinect Azure technology. For that reason, you'll notice when you're working on Touch Designer that you can use tops like the Azure Kinect Chop top and the Azure Kinect Chop to get data from your back Femtomega or your back Femtoball because effectively they're using the exact same technology. Here I have a photo of the setup that I have uh, where I have my Orbeck uh, Femtoball very close to my Kinect Azure to try to compare what are the differences on the field of view and the image of both. Let's start with uh, the depth. I'm going to hit play. And as you can see, the depth image is very similar between the two. They actually have the same field of view as expected. Um, and they have, I would say, a similar level of noise. I'm going to move these guys out of the scene because we don't need them. Um, they have a similar level of noise, uh, both images. So. You know, that is something that we knew it was very similar. The one thing that I would say is that the Orbeck Femtoball has a faster clipping. Here, my Orbeck starts clipping while my Kinect Azure still has some depth. Um, and this um, is the default Kinect Azure Orbeck first uh, top that you can add. And they are similar, but also they are different. They both have uh, color resolution options. They both have uh, camera color FPS options. However, you would notice that the Kinect Azure has uh, body tracking, specifically options for body tracking that the Orbeck doesn't have. Um, and that's because if you were to use body tracking with your bag, you would actually do it through the Kinect Azure, because remember that the body tracking um, options on our back are handled through the Kinect Azure SDK wrapper. So what I would do is instead of using an our back top, I would use a Kinect Azure top, and I would select here my our back camera to get my data that then I would send to my chop. 
So that's in the case of depth. Another thing that I can see here is, for example, I have gyro sensors and accelerometer sensors on my Orbeck, which I don't have on my Kinect Azure. So that's another thing that is different. Uh, the option of aligning my camera, either my depth camera to my color camera or my color camera to my depth camera in the Orbeck is called like depth align mode. So depending of your or back is hardware software in this case is software and my depth image will match my color image. Uh, but then just so you know that. Then we have, of course, the select nodes. I have my Orbeck select and my Kinect Azure select. And in this case, I turn both on color and let me make this visible and let me make this invisible to not make this computer sad. Um, and you can see they look quite similar, but also quite different. Uh, and here's where we start seeing clearly the differences. This is my Kinect Azure image, and you can see how the field of view is so much more uh, wider than the field of view of my Orbeck. The options are very similar. I can only select whether I want a color or not. Uh, but in the case of the Kinect Azure, I can retroactively align these to the other cameras or, or sync it to body tracking. I could build my whole pipeline in or back using the Kinect Azure, by the way. Um, I could just come in here, drop the or back, and just use all the nodes of the Kinect Azure. However, if you notice something that's happening on the back, the image has. Um, a higher dynamic range. It's hard to notice right now, mostly because the lighting is very even. Uh, but if we were to try, if I were recording this video at night, for example, you would notice that the Kinect starts having a lot of um, noise where my Orbeck image actually is almost noiseless. Another thing that I wanted to show to you is in the case of my Kinect Azure image, um, I can select um, my image uh, color resolution in here, and by default, it gives me 1920 by 1080. In the case of their back, it doesn't do it by default. So if I were to use this, I have to make sure I select my 1920 by 1080. If that's what I want, I could also do, you know, if I want something like a 4K, I could do that as well. So this is pretty much the same. Another aspect in which I can see a slight difference is actually in my point cloud. Up here, I have my Orbeck point cloud added with my Orbeck select, selecting my point cloud. And here I have my Kinect Azure point cloud. And you would notice it seems that the Kinect Azure point cloud has a little bit more of noise or boil in comparison with the Orbeck point cloud. The Orbeck point cloud feels a little bit less boily and noisy. And you can see it actually on this edge of this is actually the edge of of the platform that is right here, uh, you can see that in here is a little bit more noisy. In the case of the Orbeck, it seems like it's a little bit more stable. There's still noise, but it is slightly less boily. However, you can see some noise in here that you don't see on the Kinect. Um, it is, again, it is not that much of a difference. It's just slightly uh, something. And the last thing on these four image differences is my infrared and the infrared similar to my depth camera has the same field of view they both share the same field of view it's a, because the rgb camera is the one that is different my infrared is using actually the camera that uses depth so it is exactly the same field of view and you can see they both seem just as sensitive to like reflective infrared objects um there's a different point of reflection of the object because they are at different points. Um, and it seems that the Orbeck, it's actually blowing up here uh, faster than the Kinect. Um, again, it seems like the Orbeck in general doesn't, doesn't want you to be that close. Uh, but these are the general differences on the image side of the Orbeck and the Kinect. The last thing I want to show you is how do I get my skeleton data from my Orbeck to control my installation. If you go to your chop menu, you'll notice there's no such thing as an Orbeck chop. So in the case of the Kinect, we usually add the Kinect Azure, and then we add the Kinect Azure chop, and that's what allows us to get the data. Uh, because we don't have an Orbeck chop, what we do, and because Orbeck is actually using a wrapper that is taking the 
Kinect image understanding algorithm. I'm going to use the Kinect Azure top as well as the Kinect Azure top. If I try to connect my Orbeck top in here, it won't work because it is expecting specifically for the Kinect Azure top. So if I put this in here, uh, if I had a skeleton, I could see a skeleton because I only have Lego pieces. Well, we're seeing nothing because there's no skeletons in here. But what I can do in my Kinect Azure top is that I can select my Orbeck as the source. And when I do that, you don't notice much of a difference because we are on depth camera, which has the exact same field of view. Um, you notice a little bit of a jump, if anything. But I can access this data in here. If I had a skeleton, again, just putting my work back uh, in here, I would be able to access my skeleton data on my Kinect Azure chop. And that's the way that you're able to use your bag with the Kinect Azure chop to get your data out. Uh, one last thing is if you are building a project and if I had created an Orbeck top before my Kinect Azure top, even if I delete my top, even if I uh, turn it off, whatever I do, it wouldn't work. You have to reset <laughs> your project to use your, your Orbeck with your Kinect Azure top if you've added an Orbeck top initially. That's like a little quirk, uh, just so you know um, if it were to happen, you just have to restart the project. Another thing I wanna talk to you a little bit about before we leave is the way of both viewers uh, on both devices. So here I have my Azure Kinect Veer, I can select my Kinect Azure, I can start and I can preview all the things as I've always been able to. Uh, the Orbeck has a very similar viewer, uh, is exactly the exact same thing and I can um, turn on and I can start doing some streaming. I have to select specifically what I want to stream and it will stream uh, that. It want to stream everything just by default. Uh, but it has, you know, a very similar um, options that I have on the case of the Kinect Azure viewer. It is a different viewer, but it's very similar. Now, if you're trying to do something like record data, you would be using the exact Kinect Azure recorder that you would be using before. It is actually the exact same file um, that you use for the Orbeck. Just so you know, uh, so a lot of the functionalities, specifically the skeleton tracking functionalities and the scene understanding functionalities of the Kinect in the Orbeck are processed through Kinect to say it in a certain way. So you can use all the old platforms uh, for a scene understanding, so a skeleton data specifically. The last question is, okay, so what is the difference between the Orbeck Bolt and the Orbeck Femto Omega, and why use one or the other? Uh, the biggest difference between the Orbeck Femto Bolt and the Orbeck Femto Omega is that the Mega has a better connectivity for network uh, connections. So even though their back Femto Bolt has uh, eight pins and is so much better than the regular audio jack that you have with the Kinect, the Orbeck Femto Vega is even more optimized for that use case. Uh, but one of the one one of the most interesting things that Orbeck Femto Mega has is that it has a NVIDIA Jetson nanoprocessor in-camera processing that allows you in-camera processing. So it is actually more uh, lenient on the um, device that you're using to process your content because the Mega does take some load of the processing of image understanding inside the Orbeck. And at the end of the day, these technologies, the way we're using them and the way that they're special is of course, the way they are like understanding the image, very similar to what we're doing with AI when we use something like Teachable Machine, or media pipe, but these are specific algorithms that are optimized uh, for use cases. Well, and that's all for this breakdown of the differences between the Kinect Azure and your back Femto Bolt. Basically, if you don't have a Kinect Azure by now, you would have to buy an Orbeck Femto Bolt because it's the only way you can have access to the body tracking and scene understanding technologies that Microsoft developed for the Kinect Azure. Uh, but it's not like you lose something. You're actually winning some sturdiness with a device that is developed for commercial use, not only for like research and prototyping use. So that's a really cool thing. 
If you've used your BecFemto Mega or the BecFemto Bolt in your pipeline, let us know in the comments how that changed your process. And if you feel that you've win something with this like new structure that is a little bit more sturdy, uh, even though you have a smaller field of view. Um, that's all for this video, and I see you the next time. Hey folks, thanks for watching. If you like our YouTube content, I highly recommend you check out the interactive and immersive HQ Pro. The HQ Pro is the only comprehensive educational resource and community for immersive design, touch designer, and creative tech pros. In the HQ Pro trainings, we cover almost any topic you can think of, and we go way more in depth than we do in our YouTube tutorials. We have a private group where Matthew Reagan, myself, and our other industry veteran and pioneer teachers answer your questions every single day. If that sounds cool, click the link in the description to learn more. And if you enjoyed this video, hit that like button and don't forget to subscribe for more free touch designer and immersive content.